so hello guys today as you may nbsc means 2013 part 2 solve rule as today i'll be solving part 2 uh, first part that is 126 marks voila solve rule as and the next video i'll be solving the nagaland portion so i'll be starting from two marks consecutively to <coughs> five marks 10 marks and 20 marks so i'll be solving all the questions so let's get the video started so the two marks will be starting now okay okay so two marks mention the merits of imperialism so what is the merits of imperialism is access to new technology uh, it creates more educational opportunities it exposes people to new ethnicities and culture and it has there is better market access because of imperialism because so if we see the british india which is under the colonial power which is under the colonial influence of british india so under this there were many technologies uh, introduced educational opportunities to indians and new culture and ethnicities were exposed and better market access was provided so next what is mean by depreciation so re uh, relative depreciation De relative depreciation means uh, comparing the um, resources or the um, with of an individual with the group that are accustomed to for example if your salary is rupees 500 and your friend's salary is rupees 10,000 so as compared to your salary your friend's salary is much higher as compared to you so there is a difference in income so the lack of resources to sustain the diet lifestyle activities and amenities that an individual or a group is accustomed to is called relative depreciation it allows measuring of objective comparison between situation of an individual with the rest of the society next what is game theory so game theory is a theory in which the the in which the action of an in of a single firm can effectively can affect the payoff of other participating player for example if there are four if there are four companies and each has 25 percent share so the action of a company can affect the overall market structure of the uh, can affect the overall market structure so the action of a company can affect the um, the result of the payoff of other participating players so each decision maker is a player in the game of business next what is red tapism red tapism basically means excessive regulation or rigid conformity to formal rules it is which is bureaucratic and it hinders and prevents decision making and it is not only seen in government but also in corporation organizations next denote the criteria of integrity in civil service so integrity is defined as the morals of being honest and maintaining strong moral principles and it and um, it provides for financial integrity this is preventing corruption professional integrity not showing um uh, not giving influence to other to your relatives and intellectual integrity means using our knowledge for the best of our society next and the integrity in terms of virtue means the quality of a person's character so next mention the categories of ministers so article 74 provides for the status of a council and ministers and it is subdivided into three that is cabinet minister that is which forms the core of ministership the minister of state holding independent charge and deputy ministers next in which year was the g20 elevated to a leader summit so the g20 leader summit was was elevated in 2008 because of the financial crisis we know that in 2008 a financial crisis occurred due to um, liquidity due to liquidity crisis and also it was founded to reform founded for reform to avoid similar crisis in the future and it was held in washington dc in the united states of america next to which 
are Jeepco movement related to and where it took place. So Jeepco movement is a forest con conservation movement in India and it began in 1974 in the Chamoli district of Uttarakhand. And it is a non-violent movement which is aimed at protecting the conservation of trees from being destroyed and Jeepco means to, means to embarrass. And the Jeepco movement was started by Sundarlal Bahuguna. Sundarlal Bahuguna who died in 2021 due to COVID-19. So this is a uh, current affairs. Next. Particularly to which reference Bardoli Satyagraha cropped up. So Bardoli Satyagraha cropped up in 1926 and it decided to increase the land revenue by 30 percent. Wallabai Badal was the leader and it was uh, under this the the Bardoli peasants resolved to refuse payment of the revised as of the revised assessment until the government appointed an independent tribunal or accepted the current payment as full payment. So next, point out the uh, problems faced by the third gender in the society. So the third gender refers to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual, queer. So these are the these are the third gender and the problems faced by the third gender in the society are discrimination means outcasting them, unemployment, not providing them un uh, not providing them employment, educational facilities uh, discriminating them in the f in the field of education homelessness driving them out of the house and lack of medical facilities not providing proper medical care so these are the problems what are the types of organisms that uh, type of organisms play the role of decomposers in the ecosystem so decomposers are those that decomposes or breaks down the organic material such as the remains of dead organisms and it uh, examples of fun, 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 fungi and bacteria and mushrooms are fungus which play an active role in decomposition. Next, what is certiorari in judicial system? Certiorari means to be certified or to be informed. Suppose a Gohati High Court and 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 Dimapur Court, a uh, district court. So if the action committed by a by a district court is not in, con in is is considered unconstitutional by the Guwahati High Court. So the Guwahati High Court can impose certiorari. Certiorari means to quash the order or to prevent the court from accessing excessive jurisdiction. So certiorari means to be certified or to be informed. It is provided by the higher court to a lower court and to transfer the case or quash the order. It is based on the ground of excessive jurisdiction or error of law and unlike prohibition which is preventive it is certainly is also preventive as well as curative and it is not found against legislative bodies and in private individuals next where is the rocky mountain it is in canada uh, colorado united states of america next we name the two dormant volcanoes it is mount kilimanjaro tanzania it is in africa and mount mauna kia is in italy the distance between mars and jupiter is 588 million kilometers where do you see the midnight sun? So the midnight sun can be seen in um, in even countries like Iceland, Finland, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark near the Arctic Circle. Next, what is countervailing duty? It is a tax on products now that enjoy benefits like export subsidies in the country of the origin. Suppose a country is exporting rice, and this country enjoys benefits in that country, and when it exports to other countries. The other country will impose countervailing duty because on the product because so as to prevent so as to prevent imbalance in the market and and protect the and protect domestic goods from being um, uh, protecting the uh, domestic goods to ensure fair and market oriented pricing. Next, monopsony. What is monopsony? Monopsony. Mono means one and Sony means seller. Means only one seller, uh, only one buyer. Sorry, Sony is buyer. And in a monopsony, a large buyer controls the entire market. For example, a product, a product in which a company owns, uh, in which a company buys fifty percent of it. So the company, so the company enjoys monopsony over the material, over the market. So monopsony does not adhere to standard pricing and balance and balancing supply and demand side in the factors. Uh, demand side factors so with this the two marks question is ending so and that so we'll start with the five marks question what was the initial objectives of establishing a g20 uh, g20 so we can we can give a brief introduction about g20 
and some objectives regarding the G20. So if we look at G20, if we look at G20, what is G20 means? It is a uh, forum. It is a forum for finance ministers and central bank governors, which was established in 1999 September by seven in major industrial countries, and it was it was formed to bring together industrialized and developing nations to discuss key issues in the market, in the global economy, and the objectives are global coordination among its members to achieve global econ uh, economic stability and sustainable growth. Next, to promote financial regulation and reduce risk and to create international financial architecture. So these are the objectives of the G20, right? And not on greenhouse gas, uh, greenhouse effect. So what is greenhouse effect? The greenhouse effect is the warming of the Earth's surface. So we know that the Earth is surrounded by a blanket of air called the atmosphere. The atmosphere contains many gases such as carbon dioxide, ozone, etc. So when the sun rays hits the Earth's surface, some of the heat are transferred back while some remains inside the Earth's surface providing the heat providing the heat to sustain life. So this is called the greenhouse effect. This is a natural process until until the until the concentration of greenhouse gases becomes more which causes increase in the earth's temperature so the greenhouse gases is a natural process that warms the earth's surface when the sun's energy reaches the earth's surface some of it are reflected back and uh, some are and the rest are really radiated by the greenhouse gases so greenhouse gases contain gases such as carbon dioxide you can write methane nitrous oxide ozone and artificial chemicals like cfc so they absorb energy warms the earth's surface and sustains life so the problem starts when due to human induced activities it particularly burning fossil fuels land clearing are increasing the concentration of greenhouse gases and this will lead to increase in the earth's temperature more than two degrees celsius every year next elucidate on the factors responsible for the origin of a political party so for five marks you can write five uh, for five of uh, five answer and each answer you can you can uh, e expand with so for cost some of the factors of casteism due to cost factors such as sc st and obc and for addressing these issues the political parties are formed linguism on the basis of language and regionalism means originalism is a concept in which the people believe that they need to protect the region by any cost for uh, for example the northeastern states of india the the region of bihar uh, uttar pradesh etc is called regionalism what is communalism communalism means uh, means re, uh, re, those political parties form on the basis of religion and social factors social factors such as corruption basic infrastructure lack of basic infrastructure water supply electricity etc which leads to formation of political bodies and a classic example of social factors is Am Admi party which was formed in delhi to address the corruption in delhi government so due to the social factors the so the political party called the Am Admi party was formed due to this social factors next why not the role of the CVC? The Central Vigilance Commission is a uh, is an agency for preventing corruption in the central government, and it was established in 1964 due to the Sandanam Committee on Prevention of Corruption, and it consists of a CVC and not more than two CVC uh, vigilance commissioner, and the term is four years or till 64 years of age, whichever is earlier. And the function of CVC is to inquire into corruption cases in the public servant. Uh, under the Prevention of Corruption Act 1988, and inquire into the into the corruption into the corruption charges of an all India services, that is the IES, the IES, the IPS, the IFS, etc., and also the Group A officers of the central government. Next, and to tender advice to the central government to to ad, to provide advice to the central central government in the matters of in the matters of corruption prevention and to receive information relating to suspicious money laundering 
uh, transaction under the Mon Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. And next is uh, appointment of the director, director of prosecution under CBI under the recommendation of the Central Vigilance Commissioner. So these are the functions of the Central Vigilance Commissioner. What is earthquake and causes of earthquake? Earthquake means the sudden shaking of the Earth's surface resulting in sudden release of energy from the Earth's crust. We know that the Earth's, at Earth's crust is made up of many tectonic plates and these tectonic plates when they strike against each other, uh, electric uh, earthquakes is formed. So this uh, this release of energy causes earthquake. The Earth's crust consists of seven lithospheric plates and numerous smaller plates, and earthquakes are caused by sudden release of stress along float faults in the Earth's crust. And the sudden motion of the tectonic plates caused by the steady buildup of pressure strata in both sides causes release of sudden jerky like jerky movement. And the causes of Earthquake is as I mentioned above tectonic activity, the striking of two plates causes release of energy and induced activity. Human induced activity like tunnel construction, filling reservoirs, implementing geothermal projects also causes earthquake. Volcanic ed uh, activity, eruptions of volcano also causes earthquake, although less in, in um, less in magnitude as compared to tectonic quakes. And next is the collapse activity that is due to mining operation cave ins uh, when the when there is uh, mi when mines are when mines dug collapses then it also causes earthquake next write a short note on gross national happiness so gross national happiness we need to explain only some portions that is it, who was the founder it was founded by the fourth king of bhutan jigme sinyu wang wangchuk in the 1970s if the concept implies that sustainable development should take a holistic approach and gives equal importance to non-economic aspect, non-economic aspects as well, that is education, health, etc. And it is a much richer concept as compared to GDP because material well-being is not is is although important, and non-economic activities are also important as well. And those and the and under gross national happiness there are nine comments that is psychological well-being that is the uh, well-being of a person's mind health of an individual how to use it how to utilize time education cultural diversity good governance community vitality ecological diversity and living standard so these are the nine these are the nine domains of gross national happiness. If you write the nine domains along with the some of the introduction to the gross national happiness by uh, the Majesty of Bu uh, Bhutan, King uh, Jigme Sinyo Wangchuk in the 1970s. So we were sure to get four or five marks from this question. So next, for 10 marks, what? Explain the relationship between a governor and the chief minister. So the relationship between a governor and the chief minister. First, we need to explain the powers of a governor. That is under Article 153 to 167. It deals with the state executive and the, it is led by the governor to CM and the council of ministers and advocate general. And uh, Article 164 says that the chief minister shall be appointed by the governor. So relationship is that in Article 163, the, gov the governor and there should be council of minister and go chief minister to head and advise the governor and except in matters of the governor's discretion the, he tenders his advice along with the council of ministers to the governor so the so the main functions of the the main relationship between the governor and the chief minister is that the chief minister is to furnish such information relating to the relating to the administration of a state and proposals for legislation and the governor if the governor requests to submit for the consideration of the council and minister any matter which was taken by the minister but not considered by the council so the so the chief minister has to provide for such uh, proposal and lastly it is the duty of the chief minister to communicate with the governor all the decisions of the council of minister relating to administration of affairs and proposal of administration so the chief minister have to tell which and every step that he and they have taken in order, uh, in administrative lines to the governor next elucidate the role of public account committee so firstly we have to explain what is public account committee it was established in 1921 
under the government of India Act 1919 and it has 22 members that is 15 from Lok Sabha and 7 from Rajya Sabha and the members elected for one year by single transferable vote from each political party on the basis of single transferable vote. Next, the function of public account committee is to examine the audit reports of the CAG. The CAG submits three reports appropriation account that is uh, how much money is allocated um, finance account uh, and public undertaking so the committee examines the report not only from legal point of view but also on from the view of economic prudence wisdom and bring about case of waste loss corruption extra vehicles etc and its functions are to examine the appropriation account and the finance account uh, appropriation means comparing the expenditure with actual expenditure with the expenditure sanctioned by the government uh, by the parliament and finance means the annual receipt and disbursement of the union government and num next is to scrutinize the appropriation account and uh, first examine and then scrutinize check each and every detail of this appropriation account and audit report of the CAG to see if the money is available for is is available for the applied service and expenditure confirms to the authority and next is examining the accounts of other corporations such as state corporation, trading companies, manufacturing projects and audit reports and also examining the uh, accounts of autonomous and non-autonomous bodies that is in government and non and government institutions and next to examine the money spent in any service during a financial year in excess of M1 granted by the Lok Sabha. So if there's any money that is given extra, so the main function of the public account committee is to examine each and every allocate, allocated money. So next, wh what are the functions of the state legislator? So the powers and functions of the state legislator, we can combine this into many, that is, into many categories. That is lawmaking function, that is the state legislator it provides for lawmaking power. And uh, such as the uh, money bill and the uh, ordinary bill and it also in the legislative power, in the legis in the law making power, the state leader has the power to make bills on ordinary bills as well as money bill. We know that ordinary bills are those bills which are introduced in both the houses of the parliament on the both of the houses of the legislature, whereas money bills are introduced only on the legislative assembly. And after the bill is passed, the governor has to give the assent to the bill. And if the bill is passed. If the bill is if, if the bill is given as by the governor and then it becomes an act ordinances are also issued by the governor which can which should be approved by the state legislature within 42 weeks otherwise it uh, within 42 days or six weeks and unless and and unless it is accepted by the state legislature it dies next financial function it provides for best passing of a money bill and money bill it uh, money bill is introduced only in the legislative assembly and the speaker of the assembly certifies the bill to be a money bill or not and the Governor cannot withhold the money bill and must give his assent. Next, control over the executive. The, the state legislature has control over the executive. The council and ministers are responsible to the legislative assembly collectively and remains in office as long as it enjoys the confidence of the legislative assembly. And the council is removed from the assembly, is removed if the assembly adopts a vote of no confidence. An electoral assembly. Uh, electoral function is that uh, the assembly is responsible for the election of the president because the, the because the state legislature is a part of the electoral college and they also uh, elect the members of the Rajya Sabha. So, <coughs> and also constitutional function is that during a, during the uh, during a constitutional amendment bill. It, the ratification of less than uh, not less than half of the states is required so the state legislature also helps also helps in the framing of a constitution especially a constitutionally amendment constitutional amendment bill and next is what is the role of national development council so national development council although it is dissolved by the 
need although it is dissolved by the government and Niti Ayak was established so we need to study the National Development Council was formed in 1952 by an executive order of the government of India it was it was provided it was established on the recommendation of the first five plan and it is neither a constitutional body nor a statutory body like the Niti Ayak and the composition we can write headed by the chief, uh, prime minister and all the council and all the council of ministers chief ministers and administrators of union territories and the members of the planning commission now the niti ayok the role and functions of the niti ayok is that to prescribe the guidelines for the preparation of a new plan consider a new plan as prepared by the planning commission assess the resources and consider important question of socio-economic policy and also the review the working of the national plan from time to time and recommend measures for achievement of the plan and how does it work so the nation the so the national development council works when the draft five pro plan is prepared by the planning commission it is first sent to the union cabinet so the drafting commission will send to the union cabinet the union cabinet will send to the national development council and after the approval of the national development council it is uh, placed it is it is accepted as a national plan so it is an important aspect in the development process of a country so as said above the national development council is the highest body below the parliament responsible policy matters with regard to socio-economic development and it is only an advisor body that is it's, it is not binding on the parliament and it makes recommendation to the state and union government to meet at least twice a year so the next the uh, the last question for this uh, part is causes and remedies of public of corruption in public service so we need to explain the causes what are the causes and remedies how to prevent corruption in public service so first is reason so we can quote a we can quote a, um, a wise words from Dr. S. Radhakrishnan that corruption is an evil which should be fought on all fronts and all levels. So, the causes of corruption is that historical. From the time of British government, uh, the the corruption has been coming down through the ages, and since the higher posts were reserved for the for the foreigners and the lower posts for the Indians, so the Indians felt a need to to enjoy the position so it led it it led to it led uh, this was a starting point for corruption next is economic causes so the salary of the public servants are very less as compared to other business executive the rise in da is official is occasional in the rise in da occasionally has not helped much so due to the increasing needs and prices uh, due to the increasing needs of the public servant and the cost of living being high the the public servants are forced to go are forced to go into corruption because because of need of money and next is sociological causes so corruption is deeply in rooted in our society because the presence of money sh is because the greatness of an individual and the nobility of a family is judged by what he possesses rather than what what they are that a society judges a person by his money rather than by what he does so the acquisition of wealth has become a sine qua non of life that is very essential in life and people indulge in acquiring wealth f without caring without caring for the means that they adopt and procedural causes due to the redundancy and uh, in red tapism and many procedural causes the there is corruption the railway corruption in Korea has revealed that revealed many loopholes in rules and regulations the Santana committee also referred to cumbersome and dilatory procedure in government offices red tapism and busting the buck has become a common phenomena next civic consciousness due to the low literacy rate of our country people are unaware of their rights and they are unable to claim or for redress of the grievances the public servants take advantage of this next political political is that the politi that the civil servants dances to the tunes of the political parties the political part the political leaders take advantage of the civil servants and 
they and due to this the services then citizen or political bosses and act according to the dictates alone the vora committee has found a close nexus between gangsters politicians and bureaucrats in its report next remedies against corruption is that first education uh, due uh, by a report by Transparency International has stated that the least corrupt state is Kerala being the reason is that Kerala has the highest literacy rate. In most of the states, normally, large number of people are uneducated, so they are not aware of their rights and, and how to get justice. And that is why education is utmost important in preventing corruption. Next, direct contact between government and people. The government should provide a direct link between the between them and the people so so that people address the issue so a viable example can be e-governance which can help a lot in this direction and abj abdul kalam has also given an example of daily metro system and online reservation system as good governance and it will lower <coughs> and all the workers should be free should be should follow that example next is use of effective corruption treatment use of Use of various instruments to prevent corruption such as the RDI Act of 2005 and reached by the by the Constitution under Article 32 and 226 are viable tools in preventing corruption and <coughs> also use of many uh, effective instruments like RDI, reads and <coughs> many other uh, constitutional tools can help in preventing corruption. So this is the end of the video. I hope you all like the. Uh, video i'll be uploading the next part so thank you all and please like and subscribe have a great day